Color Tracker Passport Photo 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use it and provide a step-by-step -step workflow. Is color correction too time-consuming? Are you getting unsatisfactory results? In photography, there are many ways to fix wrong colors. For instance, I've seen over 40 different courses and tools in Lightroom to deal with the color only. Yet, it is not always that easy to use them properly and color correction actually needs time. By the end of this video, you will have learned how to use all the main functions of the color checker. Hi, I'm Mariana Santoni from Italy. In this video, I've tried to include all the main answers to the most frequently asked questions. I've been asked on the color checker during my courses and conferences around the world. I do hope all this information will be useful for you as well. The color checker helps you to solve all the main problems regarding the proper reproduction of colors. This is why many photographers use it on a daily basis. You can really make the most of it, regardless of which camera you use, which photography genre you deal with, or which software program you have chosen to edit your images. The color checker is compatible with all the main RAW converter software. Thus, you can use it with all Adobe software that includes Camera Raw. That is Photoshop, Lightroom, Photoshop Elements and Bridge. But also with Capture One, Canon DPP and other software. You can use it with Mac or Windows. The software package is translated into eight languages. According to your job, you may need specific types of color checker. X-Rite produces many types, which vary according to functionality and size. Yet, whatever type of color checker you have chosen, the rationale of its use is always the same. Today, I'm going to demonstrate to you the Color Checker Passport Photo 2, because I use it regularly and it's also very popular amongst photographers. Which is the right workflow with the color checker? You can use a simple workflow in all the shooting situations, since it helps to speed up the process and make the correction of the white balance much more accurate. Then there is a more thorough workflow, which I recommend when the white balance is not enough and the perfect color reproduction is needed. In my previous video, I've talked about these specific cases. If you have missed it and you want to know more about this specific topic, check the link below in the description of this video. In the simplest workflow, there are just two steps. You shoot the color checker during the shooting, and then you use it to balance white. You just have to follow two different workflows if you use the RAW format or the JPEG format. This means that if you shoot JPEG, you have to correct the color while shooting, and you can do this by using the custom white balance setting available on the camera menu. In order to use this function, you need to use the gray side of the color checker. If you shoot RAW, it is better to shoot the color checker during the shooting and then balance the white during post-production. I'm sure you have noticed that in many cases the white balance is not enough. This because different cameras see colors differently even though the white balance is the same. Therefore, when color reproduction must be perfect, it is advisable to follow a much more accurate workflow. Even in this case, there are just a few steps to follow. Shoot the color checker during your shooting. During the post-production, use the new color checker camera calibration software to create the custom color profile. Then, using your usual software to develop your RAW files, for example Lightroom or Capture One, open one of the photos from the shoot, apply the color profile you have just created and balance white. Sync all the photos shot in the same lighting conditions. In both workflows, the easier and the more accurate, you can of course also make other adjustments to customize the output. But please remember that after balancing the white with the color checker and after applying the color profile, the color reproduction will be as close as possible to reality. Therefore, other color adjustments are needed only if you have specific creative needs. Since the first workflow is quite easy, let's now get down into the details to better understand each step of the second workflow. Now I'm going to tell you all the main tricks during the shooting. Light. 
When you shoot the color checker, you must ensure that it matches the same lighting of the subject of the image. And you must shoot it again when lighting conditions change. I know it may sound time consuming, but it isn't actually. If we consider a wedding, which is a very structured situation due to its many settings and duration, you usually shot five or eight color checker. Thanks to these eight more shots, the white balance of hundreds of images is made during post-production in just eight clicks. Therefore, it is extremely convenient. Positioning. Choosing the position depends on the shoot conditions and the camera position. It would be perfect to shoot the color checker in face-to-face -face situations, but you can also slightly rotate or tilt it. In fast-moving situations, for example a reportage, you can wear it over your shoulder and shoot it while holding it in your hands, or you can put it down. And you can also ask your subject to hold it. It is paramount to hold it with a lanyard to avoid touching, covering or shading the patches. Frame. Please make sure that the color checker in the image is not so small. Aim to have about 10% of the image covered by the target. If the color checker is too small from where you're shooting, you need to go closer with your camera. Do not draw it near you if the lighting conditions you are under differ from those of your target. Also avoid filling the entire frame with a color checker, since vignetting may be a problem for color reading. There are in fact a color checker of different sizes. For example, there is the brand new color checker Mega that is one meter and a half. Yet for those who shot very small subject, the four centimeters color checker Nano is more convenient. It has just been launched on the market. The main camera settings to focus on are the following. Set the raw format, not overexposed or underexposed. A correct and well-balanced exposure is necessary. The color checker must be in focus. There may also be color differences when you use high ISO values or when you change some lenses, but it is not that frequent and it is quite negligible for those who do not shoot in a studio. Thank you for watching and I really hope you have enjoyed it! In the next three videos, we'll see all the steps to follow in post-production and I'll show you how to create and apply a color profile using the software Color Checker Camera Calibration with Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw and Capture One. See you in the next video! Ciao ciao!